Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is Episode 2 of How to Survive EVE Online, as updated for Crucible 1.1 patch. Uh, now, CCP did a very good job with the uh, Aura voice acting for the first few tutorial missions. Unfortunately, as lovely as Aura's voice is, it only covers the first few tutorial missions, and this is as far as it goes, meaning that from this point forward, you're stuck with my voice my condolences. So I will guide you the rest of the way. Uh, before we continue, a word of warning. Do not, under any circumstances, decline a tutorial mission. The tutorial missions do not expire. If you decline them, you won't be able to continue them again. Unless you go to the help button on your Neocom, or pull up help from the EVE menu and go to the support tab and click the create new petition button and tell a game master I'm a noob, I declined a tutorial mission, can you reset this for me please? Alright, <clears throat> so don't decline any tutorial missions. Uh, before we continue uh, I want to go over some general settings so we're gonna hit the escape key on the keyboard and let's see. You might want to turn down the graphics settings if your computer is a bit on the slow side. Uh, you can play around with that. But in particular, under general settings, the general settings tab here, uh, on the left hand side you're going to click show session change timer. I'll explain that a little bit later this episode. You're also going to look for auto target back one target, set that to zero, and that's it for now. All right. So, for this episode we're going to cover the first four steps of the industry chain and the first four steps of the business chain. So let's get started on that. So go to the help button. Uh, by the way, the Neocom can be rearranged. You can click and drag a lot of things up and down and rearrange them to whatever suits your tastes. A lot of these can be removed, so you can right click on it and select remove. And if you want to put it back, you can drag it on uh, from here. So you go to the Eve menu. I'm sorry, let me go that over that more slowly. At the top of the Neocom, you left click the Eve menu. You then mouse over the object in question that you want to put on your Neocom, and you left click and drag it onto the Neocom. If you want to get rid of it again, you right-click it and select Remove. From now on, I'll be referencing everything according to the EVE menu, since I can't make assumptions about how your Neocom is configured. So, uh, EVE menu, the Help button. And let's go to the Support tab. And let's see. Second from the bottom, Show Career Agents. Click that button. and we can close the help window. And let's get started. Look for industry in your station. If you're not actually in the station in question, you can right click the station, set destination, and then undock and start flying through yellow stargates. But look for industry and click the start conversation button. If you decline or fail a mission from an agent, he or she might become displeased and lower your standing towards him or her. You can decline a mission every four hours without penalty. Do not show this message again. Click OK. And we can close this. Yes, I always want to close the career funnel. Remember, you can always access the screen again through your help window. Do not ask me again. Yes, close the career funnel. All right, this is the first mission, making mountains of molehills, one out of ten. Uh, the agent wants us to get 999 Veldspar. He will provide us with a mining laser. We're going to go chew a rock. So he wants us to fly to a location in Clelalon, uh, mine an asteroid, and bring back to him 999 Veldspar. Right. Uh, the rewards will be 116,000 ISK and uh, another 133,000 if we get this done within three hours. Don't worry, this is not going to take three hours. 
but this will be a lot of isk considering that right now you probably only have 9,000 isk. So let's go ahead and click accept. And the in-game tutorials, you're only going to throw text tutorials at you. Uh, you can just read through this at your own leisure. Basically what I'm going to do, I gotta go to the fitting window. Remember that your ship doesn't have any abilities in and of itself. Aside from flying around, having a warp drive, being able to jump through stargates and things like that. If you want your ship to do things, typically you need to fit a module to it. So we have a, a weapon module that we used to shoot the pirates in the previous episode. We have an armor repair module to repair the armor damage on our ship. Now we have a mining module that we're going to use to go mine asteroids. So again, left click and drag, drop it onto the center of the fitting window. And we're going to close the fitting window. Again, you can find the fitting window here in the station services, or you can pull it up from the Eve menu. There's fitting. All right. Let's close. Let's undock. Now, a word of warning about this particular mission. Uh, most people who go mining for profit will typically go to one of the celestial asteroid belts. That is, for their solar system, they're going to go to the menu icon in the upper left corner, they're going to left click the icon, they're going to go to asteroid belts, they're going to see a list of asteroid belts, and they're going to warp to one of these things. That's usually where people go to to do mining. Uh, that's not what this mission wants you to do. If we look at the mission journal, let me double click the mission in question. If you look at the mission in question, you'll see that it has two require, uh, well, a series of requirements, uh, all represented right now by yellow circles. We need to bring 999 Veldspar to Clelanon 6 Moon 11 Center for Advanced Studies School. So this part of the mission requirement doesn't care where we get the Veldspar from. We could even right-click the Veldspar icon and view market details and just buy Veldspar off the market if we wanted to. I'm not going to do that, but that's an option. The problem is, this mission has a second objective. We actually need to go to a specific location in Clelanon. So if we don't actually go to that location, we can't finish the mission. This tends to throw off a lot of new players in the tutorial missions. So you can either right-click empty space and go to Agent Missions, making mountains and molehills, one of ten, Hoover Nair, or whatever the name of your industry agent is for your education and race. Encounter dead space. Warp to location. Or, you can just right-click the Clelanon link and warp to location. Either method works. And I'm going to close the mission briefing. And let me make this window go away. Uh, you can take your time to read through everything. But I'm just going to wind up repeating a lot of that text anyway. Alright, now that you've dropped out of warp, you may have noticed that you passed by a big rock on your way in. If you happen to see it, you can left-click on it in space, and you can see Asteroid Veldspar. If you can't find it by looking around with your camera, uh, which is quite understandable, it's very ob easy to miss objects that you're only looking for with your camera, you can instead go to your overview settings, and you know what? Before I do anything else, I'm going to left-click the menu icon on the overview. 
I'm going to save my current type selection as Seamus Default and click OK. Your overview window is the other method of being aware of objects in space around you. Uh, but now I need to know where asteroids are. So I'm going to right click the default tab. I'm going to add tab. Personally, I like to call this utility because I don't just have asteroids on it. Uh, you could call it mining if you wanted to. So now that you've created the utility tab in your overview, you're going to left click utility. Now, CCP has conveniently provided a mining preset for your overview, so just left click the overview icon, load default mining. And now you see all of the mineable asteroids in space around you. So if you can't spot it on your camera like that, you can find it on your overview now. Control left click the Veldspar. That is you held down the control button and you left clicked it. And you can either click the mining module or because it's in the second high slot, you can just push F2 on your keyboard. <laughs> Now the mining laser has started work. Now the way these mining lasers work is that once activated, they will go through a cycle, usually one minute, though there are more advanced mining modules that have a three minute cycle instead. And at the end of that cycle, uh, it will put a certain amount of asteroid ore into your cargo hold. If there isn't enough space for a full load, it will shove as much into your cargo hold as it possibly can, put the rest back right where it found it, and then shut off. And then you just take the ore in your cargo hold to wherever, and maybe refine it into minerals, which I will explain in a moment. To look at the statistics for a mining module, you can right-click the module and show info and you can see how much it mines, 44 cubic meters at a time, in a 60 second cycle. It also has an op- ah. The first mining cycle completed. So Hoover Nair says, that's it. Now keep mining and bring 999 units to my station and report to me. We've got 440. So we can close this conversation window. So yeah, we're pulling 44 cubic meters of ore every minute. By the way, if you right-click the Asteroid Veldspar and show info, you can see a description of the Veldspar, and the attributes are that every unit of ore is 0.1 cubic meters. So when your mining laser completes a cycle, it pulls out 44 cubic meters of ore. And it's going to take as many units of Veldspar as will fit in 44 cubic meters. Since it's only 0.1 cubic meters, it can uh, take 440 Veldspar at a time. That's how the calculation works. Different types of asteroids will have different volumes. Uh, pyroxeries and plagioclase, for example, are around 0 0.3, 0 0.35 cubic meters. I forget which one is which. Scordite is 0 0.15 cubic meters. Uh, Arcanor, Bisto, and Crokite, I think, are up in the 16 cubic meter per unit range. So if you can only hold 44 cubic meters in a cycle, it will only pull two units per cycle. Because it only it can only put two 16 cubic meter things in a 44 cubic meter box. But anyway, uh, I've done enough talking, and you can interrupt a cycle early. If I shut off the mining laser early, it just takes a partial load, which is fine because I was about to run out of room anyway. I'm going to left click on the default overview tab, left click the station, and click dock. Warp drive active. So this is a little bit more Veldspar than what we actually need, which is fine, that's okay. The agent will only take the amount he requested, 999. Docking 
And here on the right hand side, you can see Hoover accepted. So right click on that, start conversation. Everything here is green check marks. Again, if you tried to get your Veldspar from one of the Celestial Asteroid Belts and you never warped to the mission location, this will still appear as a yellow circle. Uh, but everything here is green check marks. We can click the Complete Mission button and we can request the next mission. And here he wants 750 units of Tritanium. Now, if we look at the mission details, there's only one requ uh, two requirements. Get 750 Tritanium and bring it to this station. In the end, the agent doesn't care how we get the Tritanium. He just cares that he get, we get some trita Tritanium for him. Now, the tutorial is meant for you to learn how reprocessing works. Uh, so we're going to actually go that route. But if you wanted to, you could just right-click the Tritanium icon, view market details, and buy 750 Tritanium off the market. That'll work. But we're actually going to go do more mining. So let's click Accept. And the game will talk to you about reprocessing and refining. I will tell you a little bit more about that later. Let's drop the Veldspar here and undock. So now that we're back in space, we are again going to right-click empty space. We don't have a mission location this time. So if you go to Agent Missions, Making Mountains of Mole Hills, there's no encounter. So now we're going to go to one of the Celestial Asteroid Belts. Again, you can click the menu icon, or you can right-click empty space. Either method works. So you can go to Asteroid Belts, and you know what? I will pick... Clelanon 6 Belt 2. Warp drive active. What's configure? This looks new. Oh, right, I've seen this before, never mind. Basically, configure is just you can show or hide different kinds of information in the upper left corner. I like to show all of us, though, so I will keep the, all of those on. All right, here we are. We are in an asteroid belt. Uh, let's go to the utility tab, and we have a whole mess of asteroids here. All right. uh, somebody's been going through the Veldspar, interestingly enough. Oh, there's some Veldspar. Thankfully, those Scordite also works for our purposes. So, uh, I'm going to click a Scordite asteroid, and I'm going to click Approach. And in the selected item box, uh, I can't target lock. I am not in target lock range. All right. Ah, there it goes. The button just lit up. Now I can lock the target. There are many different kinds of asteroids in EVE Online. Veldspar is the most basic. You'll also find Scordite uh, in very high security level systems. Um, the lower the security level of the system, the more valuable the ores you will find. Although if you go mining in low or no security space, chances are extremely good that somebody is going to hunt you down in a combat ship and destroy your mining ship because mining ships are easy targets and they look like good combat pilots the more things they can kill. Alright, control spacebar, I'm within 10 kilometers. I'm going to start mining. Again, I can hit F2 on me, my keyboard to activate the mining laser. If I hit F1 instead, I would have started shooting it with my light electron blaster, which I don't think does anything to an asteroid, but I wouldn't advise it anyway. I've skipped ahead to where I've gone through two and a half mining cycles. I'm stopping the third cycle in the middle, which is why it's two and a half. And I'm going to left-click the station, and I'm going to click Dock. I didn't want to bore you with the entire three-minute process of waiting for the cargo hold to fill with ore. I have more than 666 units of Scordite, 
Uh, right click show info. This is processed in batches of 333. I can't fit 999 of this stuff in my cargo hold. So I'm going to take it back to station, and I'm going to refine it. Now, Scordite also has tritanium in it, so it serves our purposes just as well. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Alright, left click and drag the Scordite into your station hangar. Right click and refine. And what we have here is the refining window. And you can refine a lot of things back into minerals, or for certain types of manufactured goods, whatever they were manufactured from. But Scordite will get you... Uh, Veldspar gets you titanium. Scordite will get you some titanium and some pyrite, which is another kind of mineral. So on the left-hand side, the window shows you what it is you're refining. The right-hand side shows you what you're going to get out of it. It's also going to give you some numbers, which you can get an explanation of if you mouse over it. But I'm going to click Reprocess. Now there's some scordite left over because this has to be processed in batches of a certain size. The size varies with the type of asteroid. Right click Hoover Nair, start conversation. I know this is the right agent because it has the word accepted on him. Everything's green check marks. I've got the titanium in station. I can complete the mission. And I'm going to go request the next mission. And you know what? This is where we needed that industry skill book I was on, all on about um, in the previous episode. Hoover Nair wants us to manufacture something for him. And he's going to give us a blueprint and we can start um, manufacturing with it. The problem is, if you right-click the blueprint... Alright, I can't right-click this icon. Um, you'll have to take my word for it that this needs a... You know what? The bonus rewards are within six hours. I don't need to hurry. Let's go ahead and click Accept. And the game will talk to us about manufacturing. Well, the game will throw text at us about manufacturing. Uh, if we right-click the blueprint and show info, uh, under the Bill of Materials tab, we can see what it takes to manufacture a civilian afterburner. It needs titanium. We've got all the titanium we need now, but it needs a skill called Industry, and we need to train to level 1. The game doesn't provide you with this skill book. Right-click Industry, View Market Details, and here you will see a list of the industry skill books currently being traded on the market. Skill books generally are seeded by NPCs. These are all NPC sell orders here. You can tell because they have an expiry time of 364 days. Any object on the market that's being bought or sold by players has an expiry time of 90 days or less. So these buy orders are player buy orders, play buy orders. I can't talk for some reason. Player buy orders, whereas these sell orders are all NPC sell orders. Select the one that says station. That is, you're going to right click on it and buy this. Don't select any other line, which is two or three or seven jumps out, because it's going to appear in a different station. Then you have to travel to that other station to go pick it up. I'm going to click buy. If you did buy it off of a different station, you would have to right-click the station, location, set destination. Uh, you know what? Let me actually show you that. Set destination, and then left-click here, go to stations, Clelanon, add waypoint. So you'd go there, you'd come back. I'm not actually going to do that. So... Let me remove waypoint. So here we have the industry skill book. Right click, you can just select train now to level one. If you want to do this the long way, you can just inject skill, and then you can go to the blue or black progress bar underneath your portrait. You can left click that. Or if you missed and you hit the portrait instead, 
then you can go to open training queue that also opens up this window. Go to industry and you're going to left click and drag industry once just so that it's above whatever the topmost skill is. All right. If you get the error message that the skill does not fit in the training queue, then you missed. What you may want to try to do is right click whatever skill is at the top now, remove it, empty the whole thing, and then start over. Just industry, and then Galente forget level 4. By the way, it's been several hours since I recorded the first episode, so several hours of skill training took place while I was offline. Let's click apply. And let's close the window. Close this as well. So while we're waiting for industry to train, that's going to take about another eight minutes, let's get started on the business chain. So click the help button. Let's go to show career agents. Let's close the help window. Let's look for, scroll down, look for business, Leucht Mincier, and start conversation. Balancing the books, one of ten. This is a simple courier job. He wants us to take something from point A to point B. Courier, true courier missions always follow this format. The pickup location is a station, system name, planet number, moon, moon number, name of the station, system name, planet number, moon, moon number, name of the station, and a cargo. So a pickup, a drop off, a cargo. This is a true courier mission. There are some encounter missions disguised as courier missions where you have to deliver something to or from a location in space. Sometimes combat is involved, but not always. Be careful of those. But this is a simple courier mission. We're going to click accept. I'm going to grab the data sheets. Oh, I almost forgot. Go to the drop off location or rather put your mouse over the drop-off location, Set right-click, set destination. Clelanon, right-click, add waypoint, and close. So now we've set a Stargate route. Hit undock. All right, now we're in space. You know what, let me sort my overview by distance. And I can reverse sort it by distance. Any of these headers can be sorted. I can sort alphabetically by name, alphabetically by type, reverse alphabetically by type. I can sort by distance. I can sort by uh, reverse distance. I'm going to left click the yellow stargate and click jump. Warp drive. By the way, it's very important for courier missions to make sure that the cargo in question is actually in your ship's cargo hold. Many players make the mistake of leaving the cargo behind in the pickup station and travel to the drop-off location without having the cargo in their cargo hold, and then they can't complete the mission. Then they gotta go all the way back to the pickup station to go pick it up again. Always make sure for a courier mission that the cargo is in your cargo hold before you leave. Here we are in Luce. I set the station itself as a waypoint so it shows up as yellow, so I can left click the yellow station and click dock. Or I could have right clicked the station and clicked dock. You don't see dock now because I already gave the command, so I'm already in warp. If you forgot to set the station as a waypoint, or if for some reason you set the Luce solar system as a waypoint rather than the station, you can right-click an empty space, go to balancing the books, objective drop-off, and dock. So any of those methods will work. Uh, so I am going to right-click you know, I'm going to deliberately make a mistake here. I'm going to right-click Hoover Nair and start conversation, 
and then realize this is not green check marks, so this is the wrong guy. Close, right click Leuchts Mencier. I cannot set a waypoint to the same location twice. Right click Leuchts Mencier. I'm going to click the correct thing this time. Start conversation. Everything is green check marks. Complete mission. And for some reason, the game is going to talk to you about salvaging. And the game will throw a couple of skill books at you. Go ahead and try to inject them. Uh, ah, we need mechanics three and survey three. All right, survey we can inject. Salvaging, just drag that in your cargo hold and undock. There's nothing further we can do in Luce. We've got to return to Clolamon. Left click Clolamon and click jump. And let's click the blue and black progress bar. Now I can't inject the salvaging skill because I don't meet the prerequisites. I need mechanics 3 and survey 3. So I might as well slot those in. Those happen uh, mechanics is here under the mechanics header. So I can drag that in under industry. Uh, now where's survey? Oh, you know what? CCP introduced a new name filtering. So as soon as I finish jumping, I'll show that to you. Uh, left click the station, click dock. So I'm going to click in the filter field, and I'm going to type in survey. And it's under the electronics header. And then I can drag in survey. I think I need that to level two. So once, twice. And each time I'm dragging it in under Galente Frigate, I'm going to click apply. There is a 24-hour limit on the skill queue. Namely, the last skill in the queue must start in 24 hours from now or less. It can take longer than 24 hours, but it must start within 24 hours. So that's the case with Galente Frigate. So of all these five skills, they will all start in less than 24 hours from now. It's just that only the last one is going to take more than a day to complete. Click apply just to be sure, and let's close this window. There's no reason for us to be carrying around a skill book in the ship's cargo hold. Let's click and drag that back down here. Uh, we are going to mouse over the... Okay, I've still got 57 seconds left on train industry one. Right-click like Mencia, start conversation. This next part is balancing the books, two of ten. Uh, he needs us to go and use a civilian salvager on something at a particular mission location. He wants us to go to Raynell for this purpose. Uh, and the site contains special ship restrictions. Let's see. Ships permitted. Frigate, cruiser, destroyer, industrial, rookie ship. We're flying a rookie ship. We're going to be fine. All right. So, let's do this mission. We're going to click accept, and he's going to give us a civilian salvager. And the game is going to throw text at us about acceleration gates, which we don't need to pay attention to right now. I'm going to go to the fitting window. Drag out the minor one drag Skill training completed. finally drag in the civilian salvager so for balancing the books two of ten I have my weapon you do need the weapon the weapon is important here and the salvager and your small armor repairer or maybe your shield booster close the fitting window industry just completed so now we can go do Hoovernaire's thing uh, if we start conversation with him, he wants two civilian afterburners. All right. So we're going to right-click the blueprint that he gave us and go to Manufacturing. We're going to click the Pick Installation button. You're joking! Oh, 
All right, everything around here is busy. All right, you know what? Let me show you how to queue something up in a busy assembly line. This one is only going to take is going to be free in about six minutes. So we're going to use this assembly line. Yes, we need two civilian afterburners, so we're going to run this twice. So we're going to click OK on that. Uh, production start time will be in seven minutes, and it will take three minutes, 50 seconds to do this. We'll be busy most of the time, so that'll be fine. It's going to cost us about 1,000 ISK to do this, so we're going to accept the quote. The job is installed. So, we're just going to wait for the other guy's job to finish in six minutes, then our job will run over the next three minutes after that. Manufacturing, like skill training, is a background process. You can go to the EVE menu, uh, Business, Science and Industry. The Jobs tab, you can click the Get Jobs button. Our job has to wait, and we can left click on it, we can see that it's pending, but it is due to be ready in about nine and a half minutes. All right, let's close this, and let's actually get to this balancing the books two of ten. So I'm going to close. I'm going to close the agent conversation window and undock. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to set an autopilot route. I'm going to go to the mission journal, which I can also find from the Eve menu if I need to if I removed it. Double left click balancing the books. Right click Raynell, set destination, right click the Clonon station link, add waypoint. Close this, close this, left click the Stargate and jump. Warp drive. Raynell is three jumps away. So, I'm gonna go through, hop through three Stargates to get there, and then three Stargates to get back. Sometimes there are multiple ways to get to your destination, and the return trip will fo follow a different shortest path from the path that you used to get there. Um, the next system in your route can be found up here. This is the upper of the two gray bars. So you can see that it's Vey. So you look for Stargate Vey, left click, and jump. If you only have one waypoint set, you're never going to see multiple yellow stargates like this. Uh, multiple yellow stargates only occurs in the special case where you have two or more waypoints and multiple systems around you are all somewhere on your route. I've skipped ahead to the part where I'm about to drop out of warp on the Raynell gate. And my ship is going to jump through. Generally speaking, it takes most ships about a minute to do each jump. Uh, emerging from a gate, aligning to warp, the exponential ramp up, traveling at full warp speed, and so on and so forth. Um, right click, agent missions, balancing the books, encounter dead space, warp to location. And let me get rid of this tutorial window.
here we are at the acceleration gate. I'm going to sort with closest distance at the top now, by left clicking the header. Let's activate the gate. Warp drive active. Now reviewing balancing of books 2 of 10 real quick. Uh, we need to use the civilian salvager we were provided on the black box. Uh, you don't need. You could use a real salvager if you wanted to, but that would require you to train up the skills we mentioned earlier, which we don't have yet. The civilian salvager will work just as well, but it will only work on the mission object. So let's select the civilian transport ship wreck and approach. Let's also control left click the Serpentis rookie. Show info. This is a fighter for Serpentis Corporation. It is protecting the assets of Serpentis Corporation and may attack anyone it perceives as a threat or easy pickings. Threat level very low. He's a pirate. An NPC pirate. He's got a bounty on his head, 3,000 isk. If we kill him, Concord Police will pay us 3,000 isk. Well, let's also control left click the civilian transport ship. Left click the portrait for the wreck and hit F2, or click on the Civilian Salvager. And we can control spacebar here. Let's left click the Serpentis Rookie, and hit F1. They don't give their rookies very good ships. By the way, this wreck is solid, so I can right click and let me add wreck to overview. And I am going to left click the menu icon and I'm going to save this as a new Seamus default. Yes, I want to override it. Alright, we've finished. The civilian salvager has successfully opened the wreck. We can open cargo and click loot all. That's our mission objective. As long as we're here, left click the wreck, open that cargo as well, we can loot all. A Warrior 1 is a drone. I'll explain drones later in the series. Uh, we can't make use of this right away. So let's just click the yellow stargate and click jump. We only have one waypoint remaining, so there shouldn't be any more multiple yellow stargates confusion. Alright, I've skipped ahead to the part where I just jumped back into Clalalon since I didn't want to bore you with the three jumps going all the way back. I am returning to the station. And by the way, I'm going to click on Science and Industry, the Jobs tab, the Get Jobs button, and while we were milling about in space, that manufacturing job completed. All right. So I can... Oh, that's right, I don't have certain skills. I can't deliver it from here. You are zero jumps away from this installation. You lack the required supply chain management skill uh, to remotely manage your science and industry jobs. I gotta wait till I actually dock up. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Without skills, you actually have to be in the station in question to deliver your manufacturing job. All right. Now we can go to Science and Industry. Now we can click Get Jobs. Now we can click the job in question. Now we can deliver. And there are our two civilian afterburners. And let me make this window a little bit taller. <clears throat> Close the window. And we can right-click Hoover start conversation. We can complete his mission now that this stuff has finished building. We can right-click Loic Mencier, start conversation. We can complete his mission. All right, and let's go back to making mountains and molehills, request the next mission. And he wants 7,000 tritanium. And he also wants us to go to a particular location and destroy some rogue drones. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see what the next mission from Loic de Mincier is. Uh, he wants 333 tritanium, and he also wants us to go to a particular... Why am I getting deja vu? Anyway, we can do both of these at once.
Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go accept both of these things. Accept, close that, accept, and close that. There's no rule that says you can only do one mission at a time. You can do multiple missions uh, on the same trip out from the station. So, uh, by the way, the agents probably gave you a new ship by this point. So if you go to Neocom and you click the ships button, careful! Ships is very close to undock. Don't click undock by mistake. Click ships. And I like to pull my ships separate out as a separate window and let me not have the chat overlap it. <clears throat> so, we've been given a couple of Navitas frigates. We can... First of all, let's go to the fitting window. Let's click the strip button that removes all modules from the ship. Do not ask me again. And we can close this. The Navitas is a better ship than the Velator in almost all respects. So, we're going to right click, assemble ship, and we're going to left click if you're in the hangar view, not captain's quarters, I think, but in the hangar view, you can left click and drag the ship up to the middle of the screen. And the game throws text at you about insuring your ship, so let's actually cover that a little bit. Um, rookie ship, there is a game mechanism called insurance. So if you left click the insurance button here, you can insure your Navitas. So if, you're, if your ship is destroyed, which is very likely to happen if you get confused about something, uh, you at least get some money back as a result. So, I can left click the Navitas, I can click Ensure, it'll tell you what the terms are, I will select Yes, I will go with the Platinum Insurance, and I will click OK. And I can close this. So, let's open up, you know, let's get this out of the... I jumped the gun in the tutorial window. Alright, now let's get this out of the way. I'm going to open the fitting window. I believe for most, for both of these, I'm going to need a weapon and a mining laser. I should also bring my small armor repair. And by the way, we were given an expanded cargo hold as one of our mission rewards. So let's drag that in as well. Hull upgrades. You do not have the required skills to do that. Right. This is going to be a very useful module, so let me right-click, Show Info. If I go to the Prerequisites tab, I notice that I don't have Hull Upgrades. So I'm going to right-click Hull Upgrades, View Market Details, right-click the copy. You know, we've been getting a lot of money from the missions, in case you hadn't noticed. We're now up to 778,000 ISK. I'm going to right-click the skill book. I'm going to buy this. One copy for 54,000 ISK. Close the market right-click hull upgrades and train this now to level one. Yes, switch the skill training. Do not ask me again. You can interrupt any skill in training. You'll just pick up where you left off when you eventually get back to it someday. You don't lose skill points except under two very specific circumstances. One is if your pod has been destroyed and two has something to do with strategic cruisers which I'm not going to get into. Suffice it to say, it's going to be at least a year before you worry about that. Alright, I've got my Navitas, I've got the Light Electron Blaster, the Mining Laser, the Small Armor Repair. I'm going to close the fitting window. Uh, let me move the cargo hold window over here. Right-click my ship. I'm going to change the name so it just says Navitas. And I'm going to undock. I'm going to abort the undock. There is an abort button. Double click the Velator because I left the antimatter charges on there. Silly me. Open up fitting. Load my weapon. Put the extra antimatter charges in my Navitas cargo hold. Now I'm going to undock. The weapon would have been rather useless if it were empty.
many players have made that mistake before. They've gone into combat with an empty weapon. Alright, right click empty space. I can do either of these missions right now, so I'm going to start with making mountains of molehills. 4 of 10, encounter dead space, warp to location. Both of these missions take place in Klolanon, so I don't have to jump through Stargates to get there. Now I'm going to open the journal. I know I'm warping to making mountains and molehills, so I'm going to double left click that one. Here's the mission briefing window, and I'm going to scroll down a bit so that I can keep an eye on the check marks. Both agents want Tritanium at the station, but they also require us to do things at a particular location in space, so this is for making mountains and molehills. Here we have rogue drones, control left click both things, and you know what? I can also control left. No, I can't block the belt spar. I don't have the skills. All right. I'm a little out of range, but I'm going to start shooting just to get their attention. There we go. The blinking yellow corners, that's called yellow boxing. That means they have me target locked. When it turns red, that means they're also doing something hostile. So I'm going to click the one that's less than two kilometers away, click the other one that's less than two kilometers away, in each case I had to hit F1. Alright, that's a green check mark. Both of these wrecks are hollow, so there's no loot on them. Uh, I don't have the salvaging skill yet, so I can't use a real salvager module on these things. Not that I brought one with me. Alright, I'm not sticking around here, for reasons I will explain in a moment. Uh, I'm going to right-click in empty space, balancing the books, 3 of 10, encounter dead space, warp to location, and I'm going to go to the, my, my journal, double-click, balancing the books to open up the mission briefing, drag it over here, and scroll down, and close the journal. Alright, so we are in the mission space for balancing books, 3 of 10. I don't see any hostiles, so I'm going to go to the mining tab. Control left click the asteroid. It's less than 10 kilometers away, so I'm fine. I'm going to hit F2, I'm going to start mining. Now there are supposed to be some Supprentice pirates who will show up to start shooting at me, but they haven't shown up yet. Control R to reload my weapon while I wait. It only takes five seconds. Let me open the cargo hold, just so they can keep an eye on it. I've skipped ahead to the part of the video where the Serpentis pirate finally showed up, so I can control, left click. And click approach. The Serpentis Pirate is in the selected item box, so that's the thing I'm approaching. I could also right-click and select Approach from the overview. Left-click on the Pirate's target portrait so that the triangles are circling it, because that's the thing your next module will activate against. Alright. F1 to start shooting. Now, if the triangles were circling the asteroid when I tried to hit F1, then my blasters would be shooting the asteroid, which would be a very useless thing for them to do. Nice flying. Uh, area should be clear of interruptions. Let's close this. Uh, let's loot what's on the wreck. Hit the loot all button. And then left click the station and click dock. And I've also turned off my mining laser. We're done here.
Docking permission requested. All right. Here I am finishing the docking process. Docking Here we go. So I am back in station. So this is a green check mark. I'm going to drag the belt spar in. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to click refine. And this is the tritanium I will get out of it. I will reprocess. And this is not enough tritanium for both agents, but that's okay because I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to buy more tritanium off the market. And I can right click, I can left click the price header to sort according to price. And I can take the lowest price that's here in station. I need about, oh, another 3,000, so I'll right click, buy this. I need 3,000 tritanium. That's only going to cost me 13,000 isk. That's pretty good. There are lots of players buying and selling tritanium for various purposes. Some people mine it, other people buy it to manufacture stuff. Right click Hoover start conversation. Right click Lake Mancier, start conversation. Um, gonna complete the mission. I'm gonna complete his mission. I'm gonna request the next balancing of the books. And he wants us to go to a spot in Clolanon, and he wants us to use a civilian codebreaker to retrieve something. It's being guarded by Serpentis pirates. So, let's click accept. And the game will talk, will throw text at you about hacking, and will give you a couple of unrelated skill books, which you can try to inject later. Alright, so let's close this, take out the armor plates, let me open up fitting. Alright, I don't need the mining laser anymore. I do need the civilian code breaker. I'm going to put that in. All right. And you know what? Let me see if I can show info. I'm going to my high slot weapon, my light electron blaster. I'm going to the show info icon. And once I'm showing info, I can view market details. Let's see if I can buy another. Yes, I can. I'm going to buy another light electron blaster. Right click, buy this. Click buy. Yeah, the price is a little high. I can afford it. I'm only getting one. Throw that onto my ship. Let me empty the charges here. And I can shift, left click, and drag one blaster onto the other. That groups them together, which means I can fire them at the same time. With one button press. More convenient than having to push a button for each weapon. All right. Undock. And this episode's probably getting long enough as it is, so I'm going to get through this as quickly as I can. Right click, balancing the books, encounter warp. Warp drive active. By the way, there are plenty of players who are also selling ammunition. Uh, your initial supply that was given to you by the tutorials will only last you for so long. You can right-click the ammunition and view market details, and you can buy more ammunition. Or if you want something with slightly longer range and less damage, you can look up lead charge or iron charge. But anyway, here we are at the acceleration gate. Uh, I'm going to left click the gate and click activate gate. Warp drive active. By the way, if you're bumping into the gate, you can uh, double left, you can hit control spacebar to cancel the activation, double left click off to the side away from the gate, and then try to activate the gate again. Activating a gate is like going into warp. If you're being bumped out of alignment, you can't make use of the gate. Left click the data storage device, click approach. We need to control left click both of these objects. The device and the rookie. Left click once on the Serpentis rookie. And let's get his attention by shooting at him. 
just once. F1 to start the weapons, F1 to stop again. Remember, this gun is only effective out to two kilometers. I'm only firing once to get that NPC's attention. And make him come closer to me. There we go. He's red boxing me, which means he's shooting. Alright, let's start shooting back. Control space bar to stop here. Left click the data storage device, and we're gonna hit Option F1 on for my fellow Mac users, or Alt F1 for Windows. Or you can just click the module. And we are going to wait for the civilian codebreaker to try and open this thing. The civilian codebreaker, if you show info on it, only has, in its attributes, a 2% access difficulty bonus. You may be going through a lot of failed cycles to open up this thing. While we're waiting for that, we can left-click the rookie wreck. We can approach a little bit, and then control spacebar to stop again because I only want to get within 2,500 meters. I'm going to open the cargo. I'm going to loot everything off of there. Oh, this guy has tungsten charges. That's a different kind of ammunition besides antimatter. Tungsten will also work. It's longer range, lower damage compared to antimatter. Well, they're all longer range and lower damage compared to antimatter. Antimatter's the shortest range of them all. All right. While we are waiting for this thing to finish cycling, there are some skill books that I believe you will find useful, but which are not supplied to you by the game. While we are waiting here for uh, this box to open, let's see, let me get my notes off of text edit. All right. Oh, it succeeded. Let me open the data storage device and loot all. Then click the station and dock. Warp drive active. Again, if you're bumping into anything like these walkways or beams or whatever they are, you can double left click an empty spot in space to move around them and then go to warp. But anyway, I'm going to go to the market. There are some skill books that I believe you'll find useful, especially later in the series, but which are not supplied to you. Uh, I already talked to you about industry and hull upgrades. Another one you're going to want is Afterburner. Oh, by the way, I went to the market search tab, and I'm typing in Afterburner. Docking and you want to left-click just, just the thing that says Afterburner. Right click, buy this, buy one copy. You want to get the copy that's in station. You should have 800,000 ISK in your wallet by this point. You should be able to afford this easily. Uh, the next one is energy grid upgrades. Left click on that, right click station, buy this. Next one, I'm switching back and forth between EVE Online and text edit. Uh, missile launcher operation. Left click on that. Right click station. Buy this. Click buy. Uh, completed. Ah, hull upgrades is complete. Good. Uh, standard missiles, energy systems operation, energy management. Okay. Standard missiles. You want to click the thing that just says standard missiles, and it'll look like a book up here. Right-click station, buy, one copy. Energy systems operation, singular. Right-click station, click buy, click. And finally, energy management. Left-click. Right-click station, click buy this, click buy. Alright, and your wallet will probably drop down to about 563,000. That's fine, you've got plenty for now as a new player. Right-click Blake Mencier, start conversation. 
uh, everything is green check marks, we're going to complete his mission. That's the last mission we're going to go through in this episode. Uh, we will carry on with both the industry and the business chains in the next episode. Uh, before we do that, uh, look in your items hanger for the various skill books that you uh, have. You can left click the first skill book, shift left click the last skill book, right click any of them, and try to inject. Uh, and if the first one throws an error message at you, it's going to stop all of them. Wonderful. So I'm going to right click inject on every one of them. Don't worry about the ones that throw error messages at you. Just inject the ones that you can deal with right now. Electronic upgrades. I guess it's possible you're given electronic upgrades by the game later. Alright. So we're going to open the training queue. And when you get a chance, uh, you will slot in the various things that I was just talking about. You'll find those useful later in the series. It's not critical right now. I'll explain why these are important. Uh, but a lot of these would be good to get up to level 2. In the meantime, thank you for watching.